Hi, I'm Dixie and I have an addiction to buying lace trim. Specifically, vintage lace found at antique stores where the cost per yard is usually much better than the lace you find beautifully photographed on an online shop. You've seen me use several pieces to trim my 1840s ball gown bodice, and more recently I used about 8 yards of lace to make my 1830s fichu. I also made this 1908 lingerie dress with miles and miles of tucks and lace insertion, but that lace was modern, not vintage. Some of my collection was gifted to me, some of it is modern, but all of it would be better placed on a garment instead of in a drawer in my craft closet. So what can I make with all of this lace? The immediate idea that comes to mind is frilly frilly Edwardian underwear. But since I already have underwear from around 1903, I want to grow my 19 teens costuming wardrobe. So far I've made the Rilla corset, and I have a dress pattern I want to use, but before I can make that I need more under things. And it just so happens that Scroop recently released a new petticoat pattern and one of the versions works perfectly for the early 19 teens look I'm going for. This petticoat design is fairly simple. I could probably take the time to draft it myself in about an hour or so, but my free time is a valuable and shrinking commodity. And this pattern was only like $12, and right now my time is worth more than $12 an hour. Besides that, I like supporting a small company that has excessively detailed instructions and makes patterns that go up to a 50 inch waist, which is rare in the world of historical sewing patterns. Oh, and this is not sponsored, I just really like Scroop. I'm using a plain cotton I got from Vogue Fabrics. It might be a shirting or it might be a Pima broadcloth, I'm not sure. I bought a few different whites just to check them out, but honestly they're pretty identical and almost the same as the premium muslin you can buy for cheap at Joanne. The fabric is fairly sheer and densely woven, perhaps a little heavier than what would be period accurate, but on this channel we use what we already have. For the lace, I need something that can be inserted, as well as a coordinating hem lace. These are my best combination options that mostly matched color tone and had enough yardage to work. They're all vintage, and I'm pretty sure they're all cotton lace. Ultimately, I went with the wavy scallop trim for the insertion because I think the shape is fun and unique. The pattern offers three different methods of doing the insertion but they all start basically the same way. Place the lace on the right side of the fabric, stitch along both sides, then carefully split the fabric down the back and trim the excess. The wavy shape made trimming a little difficult. <sighs> I'm gonna have to fix that later. I started sewing the raw edge on the back side by hand by whip stitching it and I quickly realized that this is going to take way, way too much time that I don't really want to spend right now. So I think I'm going to be sewing the rest of this by machine. Sewing it by machine went so much faster and I decided to sew with a small zigzag stitch because I thought it would be stronger than a straight stitch. After sewing, I had to trim off the excess, very carefully. Next came attaching the lacy ruffle to the side panel. And sewing the sides to the front and back. And I realized only after that I had sewn one of the ruffles wrong side out. I cannot believe I did that. So I had to rip out the lower ruffle section, and of course, I ripped into the lace. That'll go on the list of things that need to get fixed after I reattach this piece. Well, the body of the petticoat is fully assembled. It's not yet pressed. The next thing I gotta work on is the placket, but I'm thinking it might be a little bit long. And the hem lace I'm going to use is wider than the pattern calls for, so I may have to shorten it a couple inches, just because I don't want to mess up the look of the lace. 
This petticoat opens at the side front seam line with snaps or buttons along a placket with a drawstring in the waistband. And the pattern calls for this little reinforcing bit for the drawstring opening. I was sitting here wondering, why is this placket so extra long? Why does it not fit? And then I realized I used the wrong pattern piece. I used the waist facing piece for the placket instead of the actual placket. Now I have to cut a new one of these. <laughs> oh well. Yesterday I paused working on the petticoat because I realized I was feeling really tired and I was having trouble concentrating and just not at my best. And I was making a bunch of dumb little mistakes like not winding my bobbin correctly or completely forgetting to add an extra strip of lace where the ruffle meets the side panel. A little bit late to fix that now. And it's hard because I have so little free time that when I have it, I want to use it and so, but if I'm not feeling great, that kind of ruins it. <laughs> Instead, today I'm going to pause on the petticoat and go work on a different but related project. Up until now, I'd been using my 1903 combinations to wear under my 19 teens corset, but those don't really work well for this era because the legs are too wide for the narrow skirts of the teens. So it's time to make a new pair of combinations. This is a 1917 pattern from Wearing History. This pattern is multi-size, but unfortunately it's not as size inclusive as the petticoat. I thought the design was interesting because it has this weird little flap rather than split legs. I hadn't seen that style before. This pattern is also a reprint of an antique original. It has the original instructions as well as some modern tips and tricks. I'm using some premium muslin that basically matches the petticoat because I have just enough left to squeeze out these two pattern pieces. Assembly is pretty easy, but there is this cool back pleat feature just to give a little bit of shaping. I just think it's funny that this thing is supposed to be underwear and yet it is bigger and longer than the outerwear dress that I'm wearing underneath. Now to add lace to the neck and arms. These two pieces aren't vintage. I've rarely come across beading lace in antique stores. That's the lace that you thread a ribbon through. This is a heavier crochet-ish kind of lace that I'm adding to the neckline. And then on top of that and along the arms, I'm adding lace I salvaged from the lining that I took out of my 1860s work dress. And if you're wondering why I added lace to the lining of a work dress, you should go watch that video on that project. I asked on Instagram which color of this vintage rayon ribbon I should use for the neckline and moved on to the button flap area while I waited for other people to choose for me. The pattern suggests reinforcing this part, so I cut an extra layer of fabric. I bound the entire bottom edge of the combinations in bias tape made from scrap fabric for a clean and sturdy finish. For buttons, I went with these plain white plastic ones. I considered using some antique china buttons that I have, but I worry those aren't machine washable and this is definitely a garment that will need washing. and the green won out against the orange. Follow me on Instagram if you want to help me make costume choices. 
Well, that was a pleasant diversion, but now it's time to finish up the petticoat. For the hem, I had about three yards of this lace, and the pattern only calls for about two and a half. And since I didn't want to have scraps left over, I first thought I'd gather it. But then trying to evenly distribute the gathers gave me a headache. So I ditched that idea and went for plain trim instead. For the waistband, I had to sew a couple buttonholes. The center back panel is lightly gathered, then the waistband is attached. It's actually a facing folded down on the interior of the petticoat and stitched in place. For the drawstring, I'm using half inch wide cotton twill tape. And as usual, I will link to the supplies that aren't vintage in the description below. And lastly, I added snaps to the placket rather than buttons. Snaps are definitely period correct for the 19 teens. will be a great base for future 19 teens outfits and I'm glad I'm finally diving in headfirst to this era. It's one of my favorites. And I'm really happy that I got to use that beautiful wavy lace. The drawstring allows for a little wiggle room in the fit. Same with the neckline on the combinations. One more garment I want to make before I tackle a dress is some sort of bust bodice or brassiere. It's not a necessity for this time period, but going with no bust support at all feels weird to my modern mind. Plus, that'll probably be a good opportunity to use up more lace. If you wanna see me make the corset I'm wearing here, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Oh, and I now have a Kofi page, so if you'd like to support the channel and help me save up for my 1914 ensemble, you can click the link in the description. Until next time, happy sewing.